and we are excited to introduce you to Binets, a new web series featuring cutting-edge professional interaction with a priceless stakeholder. Presiding over this session, we have two guest editors, architect Sanjay Puri of Sanjay Puri Architects Mumbai and architect Nandini Somaya Kambar of Somaya and Kalakha Consultants Mumbai. Project. Very briefly and between two professionals. The most important period of the person's uh, professional or personal life. And this is the rendering that we presented to our clients. So I chose something which is very special to uh, Chennai. As you saw, experience in the Northeast almost rising up to the clouds. It's a kind of a newer part of the company. Architect Nandini Somaya Sampat is the director of Mumbai based architectural practice Somaya and Kalappa Consultants. Perseverance, passion, and empathy define this budding architect who endorses a meticulous and dynamic approach to varied disciplines. She recognizes that research and collaboration are the backbone of the field, while her work reiterates the importance of nature, culture, heritage, and local resources. The definition of vignettes is a shard a moment, uh, a glimpse into uh, the most important period of the person's uh, professional or personal life. And I think that's what we are going to experience on this platform. Uh, it is so important that, um, that this platform be available today. So I'll just end with a quote by an Iranian-American author, Mahboud Siraji. He said, life is a random series of beautifully composed vignettes, loosely tied together by a string of characters and time. So we're very excited that India Art and Design is bringing us these beautifully composed vignettes today. Internationally acclaimed architect, urban designer and sustainability expert, architect Sheila Sri Prakash has contributed to sustainable design thinking and the growth of the Indian real estate sector. Her portfolio includes several critically acclaimed architectural projects in India and around the world. She is also a Bharatnatyam dancer, a musician and a passionate patron of the arts. So, so going on with this, I think it's a very novel thing to, to present to design in, in three minutes. And therefore, you know, it got me thinking as to which design could be presented in three minutes. So I chose something which is very special to uh, Chennai, to Mylapur, a region of Chennai, which was one of the first settlements which made Chennai happen. So I uh, picked up the RR Sabha, the Rasika Ranjini Sabha to uh, work on this. So just to give you an idea of what Mylapur is, it's, a, it's an old village and uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it has grown around the temple, the Kapalishwa temple and has got lots of temple tanks around it. And it is a fountainhead of culture and, uh, and the arts. And there is a lot of focus even now on uh, arts, culture, classical uh, music, drama etc so uh, this sabha was originally built sabha is is very unique to uh, chennai because it's a group of people who get together to watch and encourage artists to perform and help them earn their livelihoods so this was built originally in 1929 and it fell so, you know, so we were given the uh, task of uh, recreating this fallen icon of Mylapur. So Mylapur, it was uh, the icons were the Kapalishwar temple, the tank and, and Rasika Ranjini Sabha and a few other, you know, settlements and homes which are around the, the uh, temple. So, you know, many, many stalwarts have have begun their uh, careers with the Sabha, have looked up to the Sabha, so they feel for the Sabha. Personally, I have also had my Arangetram in 1964 in the Sabha and performed so many times in the Sabha. So I share a very, very special relationship with this, this organization. So, you know, when this came, when uh, the building was broken and, uh, you know, we had to put up a new structure. 
and there was chaos because you know it it uh, kind of provoked a lot of emotions of the community the community was very hurt by this artists were all very disgruntled because their livelihoods had been hit and they were paralyzed because the sabha was not in, in existence anymore then there were a lot of these people who were you know cynicists who said uh, you know yeah this is what will happen it can never come up and then there were very limited budgets to do this and also the aspirations of the committee were so high they said that they will create a state of the art to replace the rr sabha which responds to the emotional needs of the community and the artists and be state of the art in terms of technology and uh, performance so as you can see here we have this uh, uh, site it's a very small site and once the uh, setbacks were given in the original there were no setbacks the building was from end to end so the stage was large and wide and could you know house all these dramas which were you know had about 30 40 people on stage at one time but uh, and this was this was a requirement of the committee even now so but we had to give the 6 meters you know being a public building all around for the fire fighting to happen so these proved a lot of challenges but still and the accommodation that had to be given had to be a minimum to accommodate the existing members so this was the auditorium we built it with a gallery which was different from that was a you know single story now you know we went up in vertically and and try to maximize the heights and and use every bit of space that was available so this was a challenge there were no uh, there were no allowances that were available for frills for ornamentation that such a building would really you know be asking for so uh, this is another auditorium which is a mini auditorium which has you know uh, which is more rentable and you know smaller performances and chamber music performances are better off here so that was also a requirement and so this is the section of the building where we have auditorium 2 auditorium 1 which has a gallery so the one below seats about 750 uh, seats whereas the one on top is about 250 seats and then it has a multi purpose hall where classes can be had and of course on the top there's a beautiful terrace which you know it has a has a pergola on top right now where where um, it's a canteen because you know with all these uh, in uh, during december when you have these uh, kacheris right from morning to evening people practically live here and eat here so they go go up they eat and that some many of them go for the eating too so this was the kind of uh, you know um uh, the uh, feeling that you know we went with it was a major challenge it took about 14 years to get this built and it stopped mid midway several times so the resurrection of the sabha in all its stature and uh, magnanimity now is still again become the pride of mylapur we have tried to do a little bit of ornamentation that on the building to kind of reverberate with the essence of uh, the architecture and uh, this is the ode the auditorium the acoustics of the auditorium today they have actually won an award saying that it is the best auditorium in in chennai so we you know done taken no shortcuts with respect to hvac or with respect to acoustics so uh, and then this is to me as a designer it was a humongous opportunity to offer my gratitude and to reciprocate as i had many childhood memories in these uh, you know uh, sacred premises of the sabha and now it is my responsibility as an architect and a prodigy of this cultural micro ecosystem to recreate the icon and reignite its soulful presence despite the long and challenging process so this was a special very small but very unique project that i wanted to present at the vignettes thank you thank you thank you architect shipakash it was such a privilege for us to hear a, such a personal project uh, that you are able to share with us and i i am a bharatnatyam dancer too and i've done my arangetram and i i can't imagine what it must have been like to go back to a space which is which has memories in your head and moments 
and you're able to resurrect. So you talked about it being 14 years. And this is this is another duty we as architects perhaps have uh, to community, to culture, to, to smaller cities and urban developments. But, you know, how can you share with us what is that patience and that diligence that continues for you to be committed to a project such as this? Of course, very close to your heart, but also that 14-year period and to work with the community across that time. Can you share with us a little of more? It was, it was, uh, you know, it's not- at, at some at some points, I did feel that it was thankless, and that you know I would be uh, you, you know we are fighting against so many odds because the the uh, sanctions were you know the, the, the sanctions had expired, whereas the construction had stopped because of lack of funds, and there were all sorts of uh, you know uh, things in the paper and the media saying that this building has you know uh, you know come up and it is. It, it has stopped, etc. So to revive it, it did. But there were a few concerted people who were ardent admirers of the art and the culture around it. And we realized the value of a building like this. So I think that is what kind of goaded us on to uh, every time to kind of reinforce the thought that, you know, we had to do it and complete it for the sake of Mylapore and for the sake of the arts.